In the previous video, we looked at the definitions of the two specific heats, that is the specific heat at constant volume and the specific heat at constant pressure. And uh, uh, of course, uh, these are defined as a partial derivatives, right? Do u do t in case of C v and do h do t in case of C p, right? And so, in this video, we are going to look at some situations where that partial differential can actually be simplified into a simple integral or a simple differential or it can be simplified sometimes into a difference and that is what we are going to look at in this video. Some simplifications, some situations where things can be simplified, right? So, uh, we take the, for example, the definition of CV, right? And uh, the CV is defined as uh, dou u dou t at constant volume, right? Now, supposing uh, that I have a constant volume process, right? So, this partial derivative is because u in general is a function of t as well as some other variables, right? Uh, but supposing that I do have a constant volume process, right? Then I can just write for a constant volume process, I can remove this constraint because um, anyway it is a constant volume process, right? So, I can write C v as do u d u d t right also uh, when you look at an ideal gas for an ideal gas the internal energy u is only a function of temperature this is not true for other substances this is only true for an ideal gas right uh, and when this happens, then this partial is anyway, if I have dou u dou t, but then u is just a function of t, I can write it as a simple differential instead of writing it as a partial differential. So, in this case as well, I can write C v equal to du dt, right. So, in both of these cases, right, uh, I do not have to worry about the heap, keeping the volume constant because for a constant volume process anyway the volume is constant and for an ideal gas u is only dependent on t it does not depend on v or p right so i can get rid of this condition and just write cv equal to du dt right so i'm going to carry this over to this side and say for a constant volume process or for an ideal gas, I can write C v equals d u d t or d u equals C v d t, right. And this is a common misconception that many people have that they can always write d u as C v d t. It just so happens that you can write it for an ideal gas simply because for an ideal gas the internal energy is just a function of temperature. It is not true for other substances, right? Or you can also write it for a constant volume process for any substance. It does not have to be an ideal gas. If a substance is undergoing a constant volume process, I can write this or if a, if a substance is an ideal gas irrespective of the process that it is being followed, I can write this. So, it is a constant volume process for any substance or if it is an ideal gas, then I can write this for any process and this um, is important to remember uh, and it is, uh, it is very, very crucial because it is important to know that I cannot write this automatically and the only thing that I can always write is C v equals dou u dou t at constant volume, right. And now, I can write delta u as integral C v d t, right? Or if C v remains more or less constant,
then I can write delta u as C v delta t, right. And it is important to remember this chain of arguments as to when I can write d u as C v d t, when is this valid, uh, when is this, of course if this is valid then this is valid certainly, but then if this is valid, when is this valid? This is valid only if C v does not change by much or is remains constant throughout the process, right. And so I can write this only if C v is more or less constant, right. So now we come to C p, right. Again, uh, rewriting the definition for Cp, it is do h do t at constant pressure, right? And so, following the same logic, if uh, the process is isobaric, that is, if the present pressure is not changing, then I can write Cp as dh dt, or if the substance is an ideal gas, then uh, one of the properties of the ideal gas is that H is also a function of temperature. Um, you can easily derive this if you know that the internal energy as we saw earlier was only a function of temperature and we know that the enthalpy is the internal energy plus uh, p times small v, right. And we do know that for an ideal gas, this is a function of temperature. Why? Because for an ideal gas, p times v equals nRT by m, right. And these are constants, right. And so again, this is only a function of temperature. So I can write this as a function of temperature. Why? Because this is a function of temperature. This is again a function only of temperature and so I can write the enthalpy, the specific enthalpy that is as a, just a function of temperature. And when that is true, I can again write Cp as uh, I can again write Cp as uh, simply as dH dt. So uh, for a constant pressure process, or any substance, or for an ideal gas, any process. I can write Cp as equals dH dt without bothering about writing it as a partial differential with the condition that the pressure be held constant because either it is obvious that the pressure is already constant or for an ideal gas um, it does not depend on pressure. The enthalpy does not depend on pressure and so I just write Cp as dH dt, right. Again um, dH uh, will be equal to Cp dt. And again, I can write delta H as equals um, integral over the process Cp dt, right. And uh, this greatly simplifies if Cp is more or less constant, if Cp does not change, during a process, then I can write delta H equals C p delta t, right. And so again, it is very important to remember that this is not always true. And it is true only if the process is a constant pressure process and it could be any substance that is undergoing a constant pressure process or if the substance that is inside the system is an ideal gas and in which case the ideal gas uh, enthalpy is just a function of temperature and then you can write this. If both of these are not true, then this is not true, right. 
and the only thing that is true then is the definition of Cp as the partial of H with respect to T at constant pressure. This is always true whereas this is true for certain conditions either this condition is satisfied or this one or of course both are satisfied that is also fine right and then I can write delta H as Cp delta T only if Cp does not change appreciably over the process right. 